Hi, I'm Timps, and welcome to Game Dev Bits. As usual, a huge thanks to our patrons, without which none of this would be possible. So today we're going to dig into lighting in Unity and go over some of the basics. Without further ado, let's begin. When you create a scene in Unity, the default environment that you get will contain this skybox that you can see here and a single directional light rotated at negative 30 degrees. That's to face down and create all these nice shadows that you see here. But if you have a look at our game view, what we can see is that things are a little bit bright, a little bit overblown. Let's go over some of the different types of lights, how they work together and see how we can make this look a little bit better. Now in Unity, a directional light means light coming from no source at all, uh, but on the direction that you rotate the light to face towards. So if we point things like this and change our angle so we're, we're facing over this way, the entire scene is now lit with light coming from this angle here, from an invisible wall off to the side. You'll notice that even though our light is in the center, uh, our sphere, these poles here, and this one all the way over here are all being lit the same way. So for a directional light, the position of the light has nothing to do with things at all. It's all about the rotation of that light. Disable our directional light and create a point light. Now in stark contrast to our directional light, a point light is light emitting from a single point. So here we have our light sitting in 3D space. Let's move that right into the center of the scene. And let's go in here and let's turn our shadows on. Let's go for some soft shadows. Now you notice that everything now has a shadow coming out from this center point. So we've got our sphere has a light going this way. And these are going here and things are only being lit from where this light source is. So from before we had the other side of that, that pole being lit from our point light, it's now being lit from the inside here. In contrast to our directional lights that just have an infinite amount of light coming from a, a distant point in space, for our point lights, we actually have a range value. Now that indicates how far out from the center of our object light will be emitted. The light obviously goes through a fall off process. So you can see that it's, it's quite bright here near things, but it's not very bright further away. So when we increase that range, see our light now extends all the way out here. And this light extending all the way out to here means that our light falls off in a very different way. So we've now got a very bright light here in the center and it falls off quickly as we head out to the side. So if we take this object here, let's see that the light falls off as we move it away. The extent of its range, uh, the amount of light emitted by this point light will be zero. So by the time it gets to 25% of the distance, the brightness of that light will have decreased by more than 75%. Disable our point light and create a new one. The spotlight is effectively the middle ground between our point light and our directional light. It emits light only in a single direction from a specific point in space. And exactly as the name suggests, it then makes a, a point. So for this, we have a range which controls the, the length here. So if we change that again, changes the length of our cone our origin point of our light stays the same so we can change the length of that cone and then we can change the spotlight angle see how far our light spreads out from where we are so let's turn those shadows on again what angle see our shadows start to to spread out you see here that our angle stops at 179 and that means that we lose the definition on our shadows because our light is effectively coming from all of these places. So it's coming from multiple sources above and it doesn't calculate correctly. We just we also down and we'll see that come in. There we go. So the, the three main types of light that you'll use are the directional light, the point light and the spotlight. So now let's have a look at shadows. Light out a little bit. So we've got some, some shadows going on. So no shadows, fairly self-explanatory. Uh, surfaces are only lit based on their normal so basically, so each polygon has a normal with the angle coming out and surfaces are lit in unity based on the normals. So the normals of each polygon, if you think of things like we've got this gizmo here, so this little square here would be our polygon and this is our normal facing out. So the angle of a normal on each polygon is compared to the angle to the light. And that lighting threshold dictates where things are. So things that face like here, they're facing almost directly towards the light. So they're lit perfectly. But as we go further around the sphere, the angle of these is facing up and the angle to the light is over here. So the difference between those dictates how much light they get. 
So when we get all the way around to the bottom of the sphere, over here, the normal on these is facing almost directly away from the direction to the light. So that means that no light is, is coming in there. So with no shadows on, that's just how everything would be. All right, let's change things to, to hard shadow. So hard shadows are effectively done like a stencil from the light towards the shape of the object. And then we just cut out the light in that area. Shadow is just made up of the area on this surface that isn't reachable by the light, but it's all, it's all very hard. There's no, there's no softness to it. The shadow isn't changed by how close to the edge it is or anything like that. It's a, it's a fairly unnatural looking in shadow. So we go to soft shadows, uh, things will fall off as they are further away from the light. So we're not really going to see much difference here, but if we put our light lower, plane out, see that the, the edge of the shadow out here is quite soft compared to the, the edge of the shadow in next to the object. That's the effect that the, the soft shadows have, this softening from further away to, to simulate how things are in, in real life. Many, many things in Unity are all about smoke and mirrors. Game engines are very heavily based on trickery and what would you expect to see and, and that kind of thing. So those are the, uh, the types of shadows. So while we're on soft shadows, we've got some settings that we can alter. So bias is the, the setting that controls how much shadows are pushed away from the light source. So if we bring that all the way down to, to zero, see here that shadow effectively created in an area that we wouldn't expect to see a shadow in real life. So by default, those shadow bias settings are around 0 0.2, which pushes things just a little bit further out and stops things from causing uh, self-shadowing in an area that you wouldn't expect to see it. Uh, normal bias, which is not evident uh, with these default shapes, but the normal bias effectively controls uh, how lights are affected by edges between normals. So if you think of a, a crease in a created game object, like a character or something like that, the different parts of the model will be facing in different directions. So as you go from say the, the top of an arm to the side of an arm, there's a big change in that direction and how Unity needs to calculate how much light will go through and what, what resolution that's at. So if we jump in and grab a character. Okay, so we've just switched back to our directional light. So we've brought a character out and you'll see here there are there are gaps in the shadow. So if we, on our directional light, if we then bring the normal bias down, those are resolved. So when you see these little gaps and things in here, these lights that sit in the middle of the mesh here are being caused by these changes in surface as we get to different parts and the angle that sits between this face and this face or this face and this face. So light is basically being emitted through those gaps uh, based on what this normal bias is. So if we bring that normal bias down, take care of it. So if you see little lighting gaps inside something, that's what causes those. And just to demonstrate while well, we've got our, our character here from our directional light, we've got the shadows here. And if we switch that to hard shadows, we get back to these, these jagged edges. And that's based on the, the resolution of our, of our shadows. Be soft and effectively it applies a, a blur. The shadows are being drawn to a separate image that is then overlaid and just a little bit of blur is applied based on the distance from the, the origin. I assume using the depth buffer. All right, so there's our types of lights. There is our, our shadow settings and there's a couple of our, our other settings on there, which is what we wanted to, to get into. So now let's have a look at uh, baking and faking. So we'll get our character out of here. Let's take our a directional light, let's move it a little bit. So we want to put our light over this way, down a little bit. All right, so it's very, very bright here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to grab our, our lighting. So from that, you can go in here and go window rendering lighting settings, and then you dock that where you want. So our skybox material is by default. So our lighting source, we want to set that to be a gradient instead of the skybox. So Let's have a little bit of control over that. So we can say at the ground, we want this color, then the sky, then the equator. So here we go. Put a little bit of blue in there. And then down here, we want just a little bit of green in that light. What you see is this 
ground color that we're using is changing what comes under our lines here. Just down here, we're using our HDR color. So let's just drop that down a notch and we've got a little bit of darkness under here. Okay, that's looking much better. All right, but still very bright. So with our directional light selected, let's bring our intensity down. And as we bring things down, we can notice that our scene is now being lit by the colors we've selected here. So let's bring that across a little bit to get rid of that blue. All right, now we're looking a little bit better. So what we can do is let's take our directional light, control D to, to duplicate that. So with our duplicate light now, and we've got two lights that are facing in the same direction. So let's just move our second light over here so we don't get confused. Let's turn around to face the opposite way. So you see we've got this second set of shadows. And then we want to rotate much closer to horizontal. So now let's turn the shadows off. Let's bring the intensity of this light down to 0.25. All right, so let's have a look now. Let's shrink our lighting settings for the moment. So if we turn this light off, you'll see down the side of this box and on the bottom of the sphere, we're filling in that other side and creating a, a secondary light source. In real life, this light would be, would be bouncing around something. All right, now our light is tinted a little bit. So things were a little bit yellow. So let's just leave that value where it is and drag that value around to blue. And we're seeing just a little bit of blue on the opposing side, which will give us the impression of a little bit of skylight. What we're seeing is that on the, uh, on the bottom of these surfaces is the, uh, the ground settings, things from our lighting. So let's just switch that over and set it to a nice neutral color. But I feel like from our white plane here, there would be a little bit more light bouncing up in there. So let's clone our directional light one more time. Move it across so we can keep track of him. All right, so let's rotate that to face mostly upwards. And we'll see that that light is now shining up under here. So let's color, just make it back to white. All right, now let's have a look. So on this bottom surface here, so let's bring our light down together. So all three lights, let's kill them. All right, now let's expand just our game view and let's have a look one by one. So we'll turn on our primary light source, which is our sun. Things come in, nice bright light, we've got some shadows. Then we wanna turn on our fill light coming in from the other side. And then we want to turn on our bounce light, which is shining upwards. So you notice this bounce light coming in under this edge, getting these, the side of these surfaces here, both of these instead of just one. And there we go. There is the, uh, the very fast basics of lighting. So you notice because we were planning to have multiple lights, our intensity for our directional lights here is much lower. So we've started off at 0 0.37 for our main light. And then we've got 0.25. And we've got 0.25 again. Now all three of those lights have added together. So some of these surfaces, particularly the ones facing this side, are getting a lot more light than the others. So that's why we have to, to turn these down from, from setting number one. But that is the basics of lighting in Unity. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And I look forward to seeing everyone in the next video.